What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're covering some more r slash am I the butthole. If you'd like to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, and maybe, if you enjoy the content, that notification bell too. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of you for coming here on the daily to support the channel with your likes, joining our Discord and getting involved there. There's a whole bunch of new people joining and we're from all different walks of life. So, so always lots of cool discussions going on. Come get involved there. It'd be great to see you. And with that being said, let's just crack on with today's stories. Much love, guys. Our first story comes from Right Jack. Am I the arsehole for telling my sister to stop using the word family on me like it's supposed to mean something? As stated in a prior post, I was kicked out at 15 for being gay. From 15 to 35, I had no contact with my family. Over the years, they have somehow managed to work their way back into my life, only in a small capacity. My sister is younger than me called me earlier and asked what me and my husband were doing for Thanksgiving. I told her that it was just us and that we're just gonna have a nice dinner and probably watch TV for the night and go to bed early. She told me that she was having a dinner and that we need to show up. I told her thank you but this was the first set of holidays in 10 years that I didn't have to host and I was planning on staying home and just putting on a fresh pair of pajamas after a shower and not going anywhere. She then asked about Christmas and I told her the same thing. She then asked when it would be a good time to get together. I told her point blank that I wasn't all that interested given our history and I was perfectly happy with how things were at this point. This was when she got pissed off and started to yell at me saying that I need to start acting more part of the family, that I need to let go of the past. She told me that we as family need to try to bridge the gap and move forward in a positive way. I told her, no we don't. We hardly know each other. We are very much strangers. I also told her she needs to stop throwing the word family around like it's supposed to mean something to me. When we started to talk again when I was 35 when our dad died, her and my brother constantly berated me and told me that I just need to let them deal with everything that needed to be done. I never disagreed with them. I told them that they could handle it. I was berated when our mother was sick for not visiting her in hospital or when she was home. I really don't have much of a relationship with my mum and she is a pretty good stranger as well, so it didn't really matter. I threw everything back in her face. But before she hung up, she reminded me that it wasn't my husband's blood that runs through my body. And blood is thicker than water. I told her no, my husband's blood did not in fact run through my body, but his semen did, and that was close enough. I thought my husband was going to wet his pants. So am I the asshole for telling my sister to stop using the word family like it means something? <laughs> Too much info at the end there, but it was a good comeback, i got to give you that. <laughs> With a lot of these stories, as I'm reading them now, they sort of go into little boxes in my head. It's a really weird thing and it's quite visual for me inside my head. Like on this one, it goes into that sort of family category where people are using families to manipulate each other and stuff like that. Like the word family does actually mean anything, especially when they've been treated that way in their past, right? But that family does seem so toxic. I mean, given your past and that you've kicked out of 15 for being gay and then they somehow wormed their way back into your life and then now trying to manipulate you again, cut them off right now and let's have a look at some of the comments to see what they say sunlit fable says not the arsehole i feel like it'd be in her interest to know the real saying the blood of the covenant is thicker than water of the womb bonds formed by choice run deeper than those by relation edit to add this is apparently not the actual true saying my apologies for misinformation thank you for the commenters who let me know i was wrong I always thought it was just blood is thicker than water does anyone know the real one because i'm looking in the comments below that one and i can't see anyone said the real one either they're just arguing with each other about it <laughs> and gala grin says not the arsehole the last paragraph made me burst out laughing no you're not the arsehole she lost the ability to call you family when she abandoned you with the rest of them adila bean says not the arsehole i hate when people use family to manipulate people into doing what they want family means nothing without the actions to back it up Kicking a kid out of 15 is pretty unforgivable if you ask me. So you owe them literally nothing. Well done for standing up for yourself and I'm howling at your final line. So good. Renny Crin says, not the asshole, I am crying at your parting shot to her. You're totally within your rights to tell these strangers to step off. And Ward says, not the asshole, I would say semen is thicker than blood. <laughs> fuck's sake right <laughs> what do you guys think of this story let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story one and our next story is from ta stop tipping am i the arsehole for going to a restaurant with no intention of tipping after they overcharged me last time and refused to return it 
There is a semi-fancy restaurant near my restaurant. It's a bit pricey, but I love their food. Last week, me and my girlfriend went to their place for dinner. The total was about $50. I paid the bill and tip using a card. I made an error and tipped $100 instead of 10. Since I was the one to type in the number, it was completely my mistake. When I noticed it after reaching home, I called them and explained the situation. They refused to. I couldn't dispute the transaction either. This week, my friend suggested that we go to this place. I told my friends about the last time and they told me that we should subtract the $90 from the tip this time. I really doubted that five of us rack up that much as a bill. We ended up staying for quite some time. We ate, we talked, we had fun. In the end, the 20% tip was about $80, which I didn't pay. I might have paid if the waitress had been different, but this was the same lady as last time. She was definitely shocked when I didn't tip. I explained to her that I was the one who tipped her 100 by mistake the other day, and she could consider that as a pre-tip for her service today. I could tell that she was pissed and she tried to get the manager. In the end, tipping isn't mandatory and there wasn't much anyone could do. She even tried to get the manager to ban us. He apologized on her behalf and even comped us a few dishes for us. When I told my girlfriend, she thinks that what I did was wrong and there was no need to punish her for the mistake I made. She also thinks that whatever dish was comped for us would probably come out of her paycheck. She thinks that I either made her lose money or got her fired because I made a mistake. Am I the asshole here or is the waitress? Now, I sort of know very little in the US tipping culture. I've heard a few stories of it and you guys are correcting me before about, you know, how much waitresses rely so much on tips. So in in that scenario, I would say this guy would have to be the arsehole simply because he went to that restaurant knowing full well he was going to tip. Sure, he made a mistake last time, but him not being paid back for that mistake surely isn't the waitress's fault. It'd be the manager or someone above. If it was paid by card, then surely the manager passes that tip down to his, his waitresses. So she doesn't have the direct power to go, look, here's your money back or anything like that. So I think the main discrepancy is with the manager or the owner of the restaurant, not, not the waitress. Don't blame the waitress. So I can't say the waitress is the asshole in this situation, but you are for punishing that waitress because of it. But let's have a look at some of the comments to see what they say. Lopsided Cauliflower says, not the arsehole if everything you said is true, but huge you're the arsehole if it wasn't the same waitress, which I find a little hard to believe that it was the same one. Remember says, you're the arsehole deliberately and maliciously the arsehole over your own mistake. Onkel says, not the arsehole, you put in an excess tip by your mistake, but mistakes happen and I would say it was not your fault, rather an accident. It was very shitty of the restaurant that they refused to give the extra money back and honestly not great customer service, so I can totally understand you not paying the tips next time around. And you did not punish the server in my opinion, because if that accidental over tipping and your subsequent non-tipping had not occurred, you would have paid the correct tip both times. She would have wound up with the exact same amount of money. Arnesis says, not the arsehole, I think the US tipping culture is really disgusting. You tipped her enough before, she is in no position to demand the tip. If anything, that makes her the arsehole. However, her situation is not easy either. So I vote, no one's an arsehole here. Paul Hillian says, you're the arsehole, why go back somewhere that you felt overcharged? They didn't overcharge you, they charge you the exact amount you said to charge, even if you did it by mistake. I'm in the UK, so I don't really get the whole tipping culture, but it's unlikely you'd have the same server as last time, so you're basically punishing them for your mistake. I would love to hear some people who's, you know, been servers in the past or anything like that to give me some education on the tipping culture. I know we've done this before. I always find it really helpful to recap over these things as well. So let me know what you guys think. And if you're in the US, and do you tip people as well? Or do you refuse to tip? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story two. And our next story is from Cheffy JP. Am I the arsehole for refusing to mend bridges with my mother's side of the family? Background, I 29 male today grew up incredibly close to my mother's side of the family. We used to live in an Asian country where living in joint family household is rather common. Both my parents worked and since my father's parents were not a fan of my mother, they didn't want to help with childcare. As a result, I spent my first six years going to my grandmother's place after school. I spent all day there. My parents would join me there after work, have dinner with my grandparents, drive back to your apartment. During this time, I grew incredibly close to every member of the joint family. I wasn't just the first grandchild, but the first grandson. As you'd expect in such cultures, boys are revered. They pampered me with affection and got away with almost everything. 
The only person who would say no to me and discipline me was my grandmother, but she still managed to stay my favorite person. If someone asked the silly question, who do you like better, your mum or your dad, I'd answer with my grandmother. She's the strongest woman I've ever known. Grandmother didn't just emotionally and physically support her kids, but the rest of the joint family too. When I was six going on seven, my mother discovered that I was getting too spoiled, spending all my time in that household and put me in extracurricular activities after school, martial arts, creative writing, art, etc. My time in the house went down. I remained close with certain members of the household, but as one would expect, contact levels dipped. Story, when I was 17 years old, my grandmother got diagnosed with acute leukemia and was given six months to live. Everyone in the family was devastated. The doctor said the best they could do was regular blood transfusions to improve her quality of living. Chemo was an option, but grandmother refused it as it would only extend their suffering. Her children were heartbroken, but respected her decision. I grew disgusted with the joint family during this time. Rumors were flying around that my mother and uncle were avoiding chemo to save money. They wanted the easy way out and shed their burden. Mum told me she received accusations over the phone too, but stopped filling me in on seeing how enraged I got. I'm fiercely protective of my mum and uncle and went no contact with them. Grandmother passed away not long before my 20th birthday. Today, I turn 29. If not for the global condition, I'd be in the homeland for my marriage ceremony where everyone was invited despite my protests. People are trying to get in contact with me for good wishes and to gab about how we'd all be together for a week in our home city, having a gala wedding. Since I don't share my number, they're calling my mother. My mother wants me to respond to them and mend bridges, but I just can't get over my disgust. Am I the arsehole? I think I might be since these people cared for me in my younger days. They may have never apologized, but almost a decade has passed since. Edit to clarify, my wife and I had a small reception following the registry with our close family and friends in the UK. The above was supposed to be a several day long religious wedding in my city of origin. It's been cancelled now and we might do a family get together once the global state improves in late 21, early 2022. The religious ceremony is more for my parents so they didn't get to have one and my saintable wife agreed to it even though it takes place over several days. We gave them free reign over the event and they asked me to, to try to move and be more cordial with these individuals on the days. I agreed but don't particularly want to connect with the people I dislike out of such events. Family situations like this are always difficult especially when you've got like the mum who was the one that was being accused is trying to mend the bridges herself and then if she does mend these bridges you're just gonna you're gonna be the only one on the outside sure you're angry about you know seeing her accused of these things it's absolutely heartbreaking when that happens i myself was accused of something very very similar um with my father who's you know he, he's gonna pass away within the next couple of months or so um but when this all happened, I, I looked up all the paperwork and stuff like that and what needs to be in place and my, my father's disability benefits and things like that. And I, I filed for all those and he got he gets a, a good sum of money now sort of every month. And he had a lump sum payout from the government because of, because of what's happened. It was it's a workplace disease that they pay out for. And what was in my mind is like my dad might need equipment somewhere down the line. He might need a stair lift, which he probably does right now. Actually, he needed a mobility scooter. He needs care all the time and this money is there for for when he does need it i didn't give a shit about money i couldn't care less to be quite honest this this money has come at the cost of my father you know so it, i don't really give a shit about it but i was accused by a, not a close family member a distant family member of you know trying to get money before my dad passes away which is both hurtful but you know people can say silly things when they're hurting I haven't spoken to that person since and it was only a rumor at the time and I hold no no malice against them or anything like that. If they want to talk to me about it, I will explain. I will have all the paperwork out in front of them and say exactly what this is for and where it's come from, you know. My father himself is reluctant to spend the money because that's just the way he is. But I, I'm, I'm trying to encourage him. I'm like, let's get a stair lift. Let's get that. Let's get this. And he's, he's just like, nah, nah, I don't need that. I don't need that. So I will go with whatever he decides in the end. But that's what I was just trying to explain. You know, people get hurt in the heat of the moment and they say silly things. Um, whether you want to be open arms and welcome them back is, is down to you in the end. I'm someone who's like life is too short for me sure if a family member it does something really disgusting yeah i won't talk to them but over these little things you know people as i said people say silly things think silly things in the heat of the moment but i'm always open for that person to come back into my life you know
and this was a new post so there's only one comment on it which is from four storm which says you're an arsehole in one way that i can identify and quotes if not for the global condition i'd be in my homeland for my marriage ceremony where everyone was invited despite my protests then says you cannot emotionally disown a part of your family but still be somehow controlled by their interests you're living in a limbo space where you're not owning and taking responsibility for the relationship you have or want to have if you don't want these people in your life they should not be invited to your wedding if you're inviting them to your wedding they deserve at least a minimum level of courtesy you have to take responsibility for what you want this relationship to be and it does sound like they're just sort of like living in the middle really they don't know what to decide but what do you think they should do how would you deal with this if you know someone was accusing one of your parents of something you know pretty disgusting like that for like saving saving money at the cost of one of your relatives let us know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story three and our next story is from supreme emperor noms am i the arsehole for disowning my own mother I had a really rough time growing up, bullying, teachers who did nothing, misdiagnosed illness. At that time, my mother only did what she felt obligated to do. When dealing with my bullying problem or my past mental health, I might as well have been a bill, handled and then tossed back into the bin. My mother is completely incapable of admitting she is wrong. She's more than willing if it had no bearing on her life, such as giving a bad piece of trivia. My disobedient brother was the first to get on the black sheep treatment from her badmouthing him and destroying my image of him. I trusted her, so I never questioned. Eventually, my brother started to come into his own, and thanks to mum's charm, she managed to get his girlfriend vouch for her. After that, it was my turn. It was mostly small stuff at first, giving me the couch while siblings got their own rooms during visits, ignoring my input and using my diagnosis against me, that sort of thing. Enter Golden Child, let's call her Goldie. This girl was my stepdad's child from a previous marriage. She started getting the best possible treatment. Car, her own room in the house, special attention to her wants and long-term plans. She got her college paid for. My brother got four classes paid for before he dropped out and I paid for what I got with scholarships. Goldie and I were civil but tense. My mum didn't like that. She brought everyone on a family vacation. Odd since I normally stayed back to watch their dogs. I learned that the vacation was for the purpose of getting me and Goldie to get along. She wanted me to apologise for some perceived slight, but I refused to apologise for something I never did. Mum and I argued and she demanded I apologise, and I demanded that she apologise for being a subpar parent and refusing to respect me as an adult. She claimed that she tried her best, so what happened was not her fault. I blocked them and due to unrelated financial troubles, became homeless. I went to another state, got a job and got into debt. My mother did contact me a few times, either demanding I do something for her or try to force an apology before suggesting I go back to their state to do counseling. Fast forward, not homeless, working to pay off the debt I got from being homeless and I recently got into a serious relationship that is growing. We want a family someday. I told her all about my past and she doesn't want my mother around our wedding or children. Both I am fine with. My mum couldn't even handle two kids before showing favourites and refused to take any responsibility when I tried to make peace later. I can only imagine my baby coming to me once my siblings have their own children and asking me why grandma doesn't love them anymore. However, some people believe I am going too far. Am I the arsehole for disowning her for my children to keep them from feeling the way I did? I think in this story, OP only truly knows how they feel, how they've been brought up. Sure, we can see that there was bullying, teachers who did nothing, misdiagnosed illnesses and things like that and the way that they was treated. And looking from the outside, you would say, yeah, absolutely. You're just looking, the fact that you're looking to your future and future children and that worries you already says a lot about the way your mother treated you. And if you want to cut them off, I think you're totally valid to do so. Of course you are. But if you ever do decide for her to come back into your life, just ensure it's on your terms. But let's have a look at some of the comments to see what they say. Pigeon Man says, not the arsehole. I cut my mum off for similar reasons. You aren't obligated to keep anyone in your life that's making shit worse. And that includes family. Blood doesn't automatically guarantee respect. It still has to be earned. I'm sorry for what you went through and I wish you peace and happiness moving forward, friend. Sarcastic1999 says, Not the arsehole, you wouldn't want your kids to go through the same thing that you did. Cutting off is the best thing you could do. And Cultural Garbage says, Not the arsehole, it's a real testament to how much damage your mother did that you even think you might be the arsehole in this situation. 
Your mother is incredibly toxic and I'm glad you realize that now. I'm also very happy that you're doing well and have someone supportive who shares your views on your mum. Keep her away as far away as possible, but keep track of her. When she dies, you might want to spit on her grave as a final tribute to her. Wow, might be a bit strong, but... What do you guys think of this story? What do you think OP should do in this situation? Do you think there's any way they can rebuild it with their mother? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story four. Once again, guys, thank you for being here today. I hope you have enjoyed today's stories. And if you have, you know what to do. Hit that like, that subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And feel free to join us either on Patreon or YouTube membership. Again, really super helpful right now. So thank you so, so much. And I will see you in the next time. Much love, Waffle Gang, and I'll see you soon.